and we get into our conversation on the political terrain, uh, how we're faring as a country, the economy, politics, even Niger and everything that is happening there. And joining me in uh, the studio right as we move on, we have the member of parliament. Uh, you all call him Jata. I don't know whether I've invited a lion into my studio. Recently, I went back into my archives and I was playing some songs and guess which one came up? Jata Biole. And I was, I was telling myself, hey, uh, not knowing today I would be hosting Jata himself. But Sam George is member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. He joins me in the studio. A very good morning to you, sir. Morning. I hope you're doing well. I am a little under the weather, but uh, I, think you, you know, about, you, I think there's a bug going around. Yeah, there I'm is. I've been struggling since last week myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's interesting because, well, I'm sitting exams and doing a number of things. So the exhaustion yeah. is also yeah. adding yeah, to that. It looks like it's stress related. Once the body goes on an amount of stress, yeah. then you just break Your immunity down. starts. Yeah. Thankfully, I take my supplements. And, uh, but it's just been this morning, I was experiencing a headache, a little General temperature, body, body weakness. Oh, it's same with you, huh? Uh, yeah. I've been battling it since Tuesday. <laughs> okay, then. So I'm, like... I'm a weak kid. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, forgotten country. We are here. We, we are here. Moving. Anyway, what's, what's, what's been, what have you been up to uh, since the last time we spoke? The last time we spoke, there were a number of issues to look at. Today, there's quite a, a plethora of issues yeah. we'll be getting into. But what has Sam George been up to? I mean... The BC is on. Uh, yeah, what what, just, what has, have you been engaging those in I'll, your constituency? I'll just say a very good morning to the people of Ningo Pram Pram and wish all the students writing their BC in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency all the best. I wish them well. Um, they must bear in mind that this is just one chapter of their journey. And um, for me, my focus has been to ensure that we move our kids beyond even the senior high schools into tertiary education. Tertiary education is actually my heartbeat in Ningo Pram Pram. We're doing a lot at the kindergarten and basic level, but I realize that it's important that a lot more people get into tertiary education, and that's been a major focus for us. But on the BEC, we wish them well, and I'm, I'm confident that we would get at least 100% uh, pass record this year as well. Mm. 100%. What, what, what have the percentages been like in, in previous years? Um, I can't readily give you that off the top of my head. I'll have to confirm with the education directorate. Yeah, but I'm, I'm confident that we'll have, we've had quite a very good pass rate. What's the state of Ningo Pram Pram? When was the last time you were in your constituency? On Friday, the 4th. Yeah, on the 4th I was there. What are some of the issues that people came to you with? I know they always, once they see an MP, they'll swarm you and all of that. Our roads are a major issue. Our roads, are, our roads are just impossible. You know, um, we've got a number of roads, be they feeder roads or urban roads or Ghana highways. And literally, because very little is happening in the area of roads, you, you, have, you have things taking a spiral. Um, the, main, the, main, the main road, the N1, which runs through my constituency, which is a major problem for residents, um, you, you have that road starting from the on, in fact, it starts from the, the, the Tema Motorway all the way to Central University. That road's been stalled now for almost six months because government has defaulted in servicing its um, loan facilities. And so even though the money is available because government is not servicing its external creditors, there's a UK Barclays Bank facility for that road. And that project has stalled and it's left it's left motorists with, with all kinds of headaches. Then you've got the Afienya Dowenya Road, which is a nightmare. That road's been, and, and that road's been there for God knows over 22 years in, in a horrible state. Um, it was awarded on contract in 2015 to Mrs. Simain. Um, he's still on the road, but the last time he was on that road to do anything was about 18 months ago. Um, it's about payments and 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 look it's just the bare fact that the government feels that well Ningo Pram Pram is Sam George and why should we fix the road because Mr. Simain is working in other parts of the country he's being paid for those roads but he's not being paid for the Ningo Pram Pram road he's being paid he's working every day even as we speak even though government is not servicing facilities they are paying him to work on the Palace Mall Tema yeah, motorway yeah. Flyover yeah. is working on roads in the Brongahafu region, is working on roads in the eastern region. But the Afinia Dowenya Road, which is a critical road, 
he is, they, they're not paying him his stall work in there. And I think that the government should just bow his head in, head in shame. Bear in mind that the president did get some 19,000, 20,000 votes in Ningo Pram Pram. So if he thinks that depriving the people of Ningo Pram Pram is, is punishment for voting for Sam George, he's cutting his nose to spite his face. Um, but I'm confident that we would eventually see some work. I mean, there's Nafienya to, um, to Dodowa Road. That was awarded on contract. The contractor was on road, Ali Maripoma. He had started the contract. The NPP came in 2017, suspended it that they were going to investigate it. And since then, that road has stalled. You know, um, Contract awards were given for the road from Pram Pram to, um, Pram Pram to Pon through, through over the Lalue, and then from Old Ningo to, um, to Mango Chonya. They give the contract award letters, they give contract <coughs> letters that have failed to give a dime to the contractor. So, I mean, it, it's largely roads, 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 roads. And with the rains happening, for example, and the assembly itself is not even doing anything to help because normally you expect the assembly to be able to use this IGF to do um, spot maintenance of roads and work with Ghana Highways to fix, for example, from Pram Pram Junction into the town from Miocho to Pram Pram. It's become a death trap several potholes and everybody's asking the MP the MP doesn't have any funds for road construction right you know and so those are real challenges that my people are facing I think that's a major problem but it's just a failure of this government I mean a reckless government that's that's just depleted the resources and and is very very vindictive um, then some George is not their biggest fan so yeah I see and tied to that uh, there's a story that we had in the news today talk of the fact that if we continue at the pace we are, it will take us such a long time to complete Agenda 111. I mean, just because we, we've started off on a certain trajectory. So I want to bring in Saglebi and Agenda 111. Saglebi actually, actually happens to be, is it within your constituency? Yes, my it's within your it's constituency, Ningo, yeah. right? Saglebi is a Ningo town. Yeah. Uh, that has come to the fore because former President Mahama has been talking a lot about that. And, and the verdict being, if you're a private developer, Steer clear of the Saglemi housing project because if you take it on and should we come to power, we're going to reassess it, we're going to complete it, and you would get your fingers burnt. But is that the right posturing? So development is supposed to be a continuum. The government says it's, it's a project that is no longer feasible right now. Looking at the cost, the many millions we have to bring in. I heard... Um, I don't know whether it was Francis Asensubwache, the minister in charge, saying that even piping water per estimates by the Ghana, Ghana Water Company Limited to Saglemi is a huge hurdle. It will cost over $30 million or something of the sort. Why, why is the NDC hell-bent on, on this and even threatening at this point? Saglemi is, is a pain in my heart. Every time I drive by the place, and, and I see the structure because in 2016, in 2016, I, in 2016, I, I was with President Mahama when, um, as candidate, he took us there to go and commission Saglimi Housing. We went in, we saw the apartments, we saw it, it was, it was life. And now to see the footage on your screens, that, that shows the state of Saglimi. It is painful, it is heartbreaking, but let us serve notice. As a member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, any private developer who comes there should prepare to fight with me and my people. We will fight them. I would carry out the warning that has been sounded by the flag bearer. And to any, flag, any, any private developer who thinks that he's taking this as a gift from government, and they want to sell it to themselves. Look, we need to come out as a country and tell ourselves the truth. President Akufuado and his crony of thieves in government have intentionally sat down and run this. And look, when I call them thieves, I mean thieves, literal thieves. Aren't, are you, you, aware? aren't, you, aren't you being a bit no, too no, hard? No, no, listen, chief, <clears throat> are you aware that this government, and look, President Akufuado and his ministers, Atachia, Asensu Boache, will face prosecution. The Mahama administration, I would lead that charge. If they don't prosecute the people in charge of the Works and Housing Ministry when we come to office, 
I will, I will take the government of John Mahama to task from 2025. Because this project is in my constituency. Over seven million dollars of building material, listen oh, seven million dollars has been stolen by this government under the watch of this government. They abandoned the site, put national security and police officers on the site that they were protecting the site, and seven million dollars worth of building material that was left in there to complete tiles, cables, pipes, seven million dollars. Stolen. Look, my boys kept complaining and telling me that, honorable, the police guys that government has put here are stealing. And I said, it's not true. One of the days... Wait, 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 you're saying the police themselves stole those the things? The so-called police and national security who were put there. I'm telling you the story. 1 a.m., my guys called me and said, honorable, we've been telling you, you said we're alive, so now we've arrested, we've caught them. I drove to the site. At 1 a.m., so-called police officers with a Kia Bongo truck had loaded tiles, sanitary wares, toilet bowls, and all from the site. We took them to the Chopoli police station. From there, we marched them on to the Tema Regional Command. That case has died because the guys made it clear to me, honorable, we were sent by our commanders to come and take the things. Which commanders? When the, they said they were sent by their commanders, but these were people who were put there by national security. I'm saying... Dr. Blaze. No, no, no yes. but, but it behoves you then. I mean, where you find yourself, you have that, that clout, that opportunity. We have asked questions. You shouldn't let this. If, if this is what it and, is, and that's you shouldn't what I'm let this be the Akufuado government is a bunch of crooks and thieves who have intentionally left Saglimi to rot so that they can sell it to themselves for a pittance. Now they are facing a challenge. Look, I'm reading to you a story. If you say Sam George is not. Is, 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 is playing politics. 1st of May, 2021. Ghana Web, Saglemi Housing. Equipment worth $7 million stolen at project site. Former consultant. And that has been said, not by me, by Dr. Kaminta Baizi, who was the consultant for the project. $7 million. There are several other stories. Look, we caught policemen stealing from the Saglemi Housing project. All reported by the media. Because I, I addressed the media when we did this. This was not the state of Saglimi. They have intentionally and willfully caused financial loss to the state. And look, this whole talk about we are going to give it to a private contractor. Mm? It is just another crate, loot, and keep. This is not crate, loot, and share. Crate, loot, and keep by the kleptocrats, the thieves in the Kufuado government. Because the minister for defense mm? mm -hmm. is a cabinet minister. Dominic Nitiwo, he appeared before Parliament's Defense and Interior Committee and said Cabinet had approved, Cabinet had approved that the military should take over Saglimi, complete it and use it as a military facility because you know that in my constituency you also have the Bundasi military range which is right next to the Saglimi housing project. Mm. So the military was good. This was what he said under oath to the Parliamentary Defense and Interior Committee, the Minister for Defense. So on what basis does the cabinet of Akufuado ask the Minister for Defense and the Ghana Armed Forces to take over Saglimi? And then the next moment, another minister who sits in that same cabinet is now saying that he is offering it to private developers and then the next time you see the mother serpent of corruption, Akufuado, who is I, told... I, 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 suggest, well, I suggest you not use... Why? Am I the one who is calling mother I, serpent of corruption? Well, someone His else may have appointee. said it. Someone I'm else. Martin, else. Martin Amidou may have said it. The president's appointee, we, we don't have to... a special prosecutor, says that the president who appointed him is the mother serpent of corruption. I have no apologies using that. It is the president's own appointee. He, the person he appointed to fight corruption said he. But but he is he is president of the land. Do you feel if if, oh, but if, if when criminals, hold on hold on, hold on also become president. Hold on. When certain things were said about former President Rawlings, in fact, at a mills, I remember yes. some of the very sad things that were yes. said without any basis. President Kufuor, yes. President Mahama. Things without basis. I, I, I think, said about them, and and they, they, we 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 swallowed but, but you them. But you think this must stand because that. this this is factual. I'm telling you that President Akufuado has intentionally allowed the rot of Saglimi and allows his cronies to steal $7 million worth of equipment from the site. If, if he is not the mother serpent of corruption, what is he? Look, President Akufuado is complicit 
and what has happened. And look, you see, they turn around and say they need 48 million or 46 million to complete this. You have cost over 200 million dollars worth of loss to the same taxpayer. And you think that you have not occasioned pain? Well, like, like President Mahama has said, notice. Any private developer who has his head properly screwed or should stay away from Saglimi. But wouldn't that be interference? You, you said to me at the start that yes. it's, it's within your constituency. Yes. And if any private developer tries to do anything, yes. you will personally that land, obstruct, that, that obstruct land, the efforts that, of that yes, person. But, that land, but you'd be interfering with the, the law and the power of the state. Okay, you are okay. not above the law. You know that. Oh, absolutely. But, but, but anybody who wants to enforce the law must do it in, 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 in conjunction with the Constitution. The president is also not above the law. His minister is also not above the law. That land is my family land. We gave it to government. Government has not paid compensation in full. We gave it to government because government said they were building public affordable housing. Government on its own cannot turn it around and hand it over to a private developer. They must come back and come and engage the family. If you've not engaged the family, on what basis are you going? If any private developer comes, they will see him as a trespasser because government has not acquitted and discharged itself mm -hmm. completely to the loyal owners of the land. That land does not belong to government. And so we are, we, are, we, are, we are fortified by the laws of this land to say that until government discharges its responsibilities and obligations under the lease agreement, you cannot go and take a lease agreement from government, a government land, and say you are going to do public a public project and convert it to private project on your own. No, the president doesn't have that power. And we must begin to let the president know that he is not a monarch. He holds power in trust for the people. And so that's why we're saying that any private developer who thinks he's coming there because his cronies in government have told him, go and go and front for it. And don't forget, I spoke about money laundry using real estate. I have spoken about money laundry in this country. You have. And you I'm have. still waiting for Greda. I Let think it was on news file. Yeah, it's on news file. weeks ago. A Bob Bonfool and his people, it's been more than seven days. So you said you were taking me to court. I'm waiting for you, whether court or privileges committee. I'm waiting for you so that I would expose you and the, and the, and the rot that's going on there. Since people say you want to fight me. I've spoken about, about money laundry in real estate. And don't forget, you are having ministers of state who have millions of dollars sitting in their houses. They need to clean the money. Mm. So any real estate developer who is going to wake up and say he's coming to take over Saglimi would, would investigate the money. Let's, let's stay on the bit of projects. Uh, there's also the, the, your side in parliament. You've said that it will take the Akufu Adwa administration over 21 years to actualize the Agenda 111. Each project is set to cost about 17.5 million uh, Ghana CDs. Um, why exactly? I mean, it, it's a good project, isn't it? So if, if, if you don't hobble the process in Parliament, they should be able to, to complete them, right? Oh, it's not about us. Me, I have been on record to say one of the things I had been fighting for since I became member of Parliament is that a district as big and as cosmopolitan as Ningo Pram Pram did not have a district hospital. And we needed to have a district hospital. It's been a major thing. If you speak to President Mahama, in private and in public, every time he's come to my constituency, every time he's ever been in my constituency, I have always made a demand of him that his next government must build a district hospital in Ningo Pram Pram. I don't care who builds the district hospital. All I want is that my people in Ningo Pram Pram must have a proper district hospital for their health care. If the government of Akufuado started Agenda 111, and Ningo Pram Pram, thankfully, because we didn't have a district hospital, was part of Agenda 111. The project started. Mr. Uh, Shaponji Palonji were the contractors on the site. They were given mobilization, they came to site. Since then, no money has been given to them. They've pushed on their own. The project has gone quite far. And I've seen MPP, social media, Parachikis running with a picture. Oh, Ningo Pram Pram, this, this, this. Finish the project for us. You promised us that these projects were going to be completed in April 2020. No, April 2021. It was yeah, it was April 2021, the projects will be completed. As we speak, they claim the Ningo Pram Pram project is about 50% complete. That's their claim. I've seen the structure. It's, it's developing. But for the past four or five months, the contractor has literally slowed down on site. And when you ask the contractor, the contractor has told me, I said, Sam, go and ask them to give me money. Because oh, yeah, and, 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 and that, is, that is an obvious... Yes, we have, sunk, we have sunk in so much of our own funds 
Right. That we can't continue. And it, sometimes loans are contracted. And absolutely. All that, so they cannot you know, keep They said we can't continue doing this. So for me, it is not about the sound bites and social media pictures of uncompleted buildings. Mm. The uncompleted building doesn't take care or treat any of my pregnant women. The government should find the money. You see, it is simply because the government doesn't plan. And you see, when I quoted the Bible reference to building a, a house in, the, in Parliament, you remember, you remember yeah. that my submission yeah. in Parliament, yeah. where the Bible says that someone will walk by and point at it and say, look, he wanted to build a house, but he didn't determine the cost and call you a fool, not me. The Bible said so. That's what's happening now. We drive by it and we point to the uncompleted agenda, one, one, one buildings and say, look at the president. He said he was going to build. What does the Bible call him? Hmm? I quoted the scripture for you. What does the Bible call someone like that? <laughs> you know, so look, they need to find the money. They, they are hmm. able to find the money in this time and day. When Bank of Ghana is posting record losses, and, and that's, I'm, I'm Bank of there. Ghana I'm, is I'm coming there. They're able to find $250 million. Quarter of a billion dollars to build a new Bank of Ghana head office. How much is needed to complete Agenda 111? One is how much? 17.5 billion Ghana cities. How much? That, that, that should be about 1.4, 1. 1. 1.3 million dollars. 17.5 million Ghana cities. Wait. <laughs> how much did the Bank of Ghana spend on servicing cars? But has that no 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 has that no, figure no, of two hundred and fifty no, million dollars has, has that been confirmed? Oh yes, it's in the Bank of Ghana's report. They are building a new headquarters for two hundred and fifty million dollars, quarter of a billion U.S. dollars. Not Ghana CDs. So. The report for the Bank of Ghana report says they spent forty three million Ghana CDs, forty three million Ghana CDs on car tires and batteries in one year. That that yes, I have. Now that would that would complete <clears throat> three. Almost complete three Agenda 111 hospitals. So if you are telling me there is no money, the money they used to, comp to buy car tires and batteries, according to the Bank of Ghana, would have completed the Ningo Pram Pram Agenda 111. So don't tell me there is no money. Tell me that the government has misplaced priorities. But speaking of... You go to the Office of, of Government Machinery, hmm. the President's office, and there... They spent over 111 million on cars. That in itself will complete almost nine agenda 111. So don't tell me Ghana doesn't have money. Don't tell me we don't so have money. So we're not cutting. Tell we're, me we're obviously... the president's priorities are misplaced and he's in, out of sync with the needs of the Ghanaian people. From what you're saying, we're not cutting our coat according to our cloth. No. But then speaking we, of we have money. Enough cloth, we have enough cloth. To sew our dress. It's just that we've decided that instead of when we bought the material, instead of sewing the dress, we've decided we are going to use the fabric to sew shoe and wear the fabric. And now we are naked. So you have a fabric shoe that you have folded various layers so that it can be strong enough to support you as a shoe. Because how can you be spending 43 million Ghana cities on batteries and cars, car tires? At Bank of Ghana, how can you be spending over 100 million on maintaining vehicles in the office of the president? And you just need 17 million Ghana CD, 17.5 million. A, a pittance of that. You had 58 million dollars, chief. 58 million dollars, oh, not CDs. 58 million dollars is about 700 million CDs to dig a hole. Because you 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 entered into a covenant with a god. I don't know whether it is the god of heaven or a god or an idol sitting in Chebi, he said he was building a, a, a cathedral for that god. $58 million, 700 million Ghana cities has been used to sink a hole. The biggest Galamse pit, the most expensive Galamse pit that, 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 in that the whole project, world. That project has stalled. If it goes on, I mean, it's like a cash 22 situation. If it goes on, you say, ah, they are not paying attention to the people. They are still going ahead with the project. The project has stalled it, and nothing chief, is happening chief, to chief, how can you. You are complaining. No, how can it go on? When mm. to go on? They say they need $100 million. Mm. Tell me, look. The guys, $100 million. But, but, wait, but, wait, but, wait, chief. Let me say. $100 million to import steel, only steel, for the project. When they were starting the project, have you, checked, have you checked the cost of steel? Ah. And what will be required? Wait. How much did, they tell, did Akufado tell us the project to cost when it was starting? He said $100 million. 
So on what basis did he come and tell the whole country that it would cost $100 million? And today, after sinking $58 million for a hole, you need $100 million to now bring in steel. So how much is the whole project? Even the ark, the ark that saved humanity, how much did it cost Noah to build it? <laughs> we now know the project will cost upward of 400 almost close to $500. Uh, million dollars and and it's, it's and so and so you see why i say that it is not true that it's, it's, not, it's not correct but to say we, we should cut our coat according to our size we have the let's, cloth right. but we are not using it for the right thing let, let's talk about the cloth and uh, the sums of money we have as a country now if you look at the ddep and what it costs hmm. the bank of ghana the central bank over 32.3 billion uh ghana cities in terms of just their um, their principal in fact, they were the only entity that took a hit both on principal and interest. Overall, 60.8 billion Ghana cities. That has added about 20% to our debt stock. And the reality is that we've gone to the IMF for 3 billion. But the conditionalities in terms of meeting them with the DDEP, if you look at the 6 billion, that is about the 60 billion, that is about $6 billion. So the question is did we go or did we come? Twice the sum of money we are getting from the IMF is being lost. And, and we're going to have another round. Dollar-denominated bills, IPPs. Dr. Amin Adam said, you either take it or leave it. If you don't take it, we may, you may even forfeit all your sums of money. Quick thoughts on our economy vis-a-vis -vis the Bank of Ghana and the DDEP. The Bank of Ghana is a crime scene. How do you explain that? It's a crime scene. How do you explain that? Ah, you have a governor. Philip Addison. Ernest. Addison. Uh, sorry, Ernest Addison. Philip is his brother. Philip is his brother, the lawyer, the one that they brown no. Ernest Addison. Open to call. It's not me that said it. Oh, no, I can't say the car. Or see what country now called the Kwama or Wabano. Please, I don't know. Ernest Addison. Ernest Addison. Ernest Addison. He knows that the Bank of Ghana Act, as revised by Parliament, says that. You cannot borrow more than 5% of the previous of the government's previous year's earnings to the government. And that the moment you hit the 5% in borrowings to the government, you as Bank of Ghana governor must notify parliament. Then the Minister of Finance must also write to parliament explaining and notifying parliament that he has hit the 5%. And anything beyond 5%, you must inform government. Okay. In 2021... Hmm? How much did they borrow to government? 35 billion. In 2022, how much did they borrow to government? 45 billion. Okay. Now, you ask yourself, <clears throat> if the law says 5% of the previous year, in 2020, how much was government's total earnings? Government's total earnings was 55 billion. So 5% of 55 billion would have been 2.8 million, 2.8 billion. So your ceiling as a Bank of Ghana governor to give to borrow to government of Ghana per the law is 2.8 billion. Yet you sit there, wear your spectacles, and borrow them 35 billion instead of 2.8 billion. And you don't notify parliament. Then in 2021, government earnings were 75 billion. 5% of that would be around 3.8 billion. Instead of borrowing them 3.8 billion, you proceed to borrow them another 45 billion. Then you turn around and say, who, who should we blame? But is it, is it not also because of the system we've created where the central bank's governor is appointed, is an appointee of the executive, uh, an executive that is overweening, overbearing in many instances in this fourth republic? Is it not? A conundrum we've created for ourselves, politically speaking. No, you see, you see, you see. No, no, but 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 how can you detach? No, 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 let me let me show you. An appointee ah, is wait. obviously beholden wait. to the appointor. Wait, I'll tell you what. In 2016, mm? your mama was president. Abdul Nasiru Isahaku was governor of the Bank of Ghana. Mm. Uh, my very good friend, Dr. Nash, was governor of the Bank of Ghana. In 2016, Ghana faced major international headwinds. Our three major exports, cocoa, gold, oil, collectively took a 45% hit in terms of world market prices. So government revenues dropped. Yet, in 2016, election year, do you know how much money Bank of Ghana borrowed to government of Ghana? 
He said we have an overbearing executive. Nash was appointed by Joe Mahama. Do you know how much Bank of Ghana borrowed to, to, to the government of Ghana? Tell me. Zero, zero Ghana cities. In an election year. Zero percent financing. Even which, though which year was this again? 2016. Yes, but you're talking of Absolute. Ghana under an IMF program. Oh, oh. Ghana. The time they were seeking doing the borrow, to, we're not seeking in an IMF to, program. Yeah, 2021, I mean, 2021, I mean, 2022, we hadn't entered the IMF program. And that's what I'm saying to you. That it is not about the system. It is about the persons in the system. If you have someone who loves this country, who thinks about this country and its future, mm. the way the system is run is different from when you have a kleptocrat at the, at the helm of affairs and, and minions who are also kleptocrats. That is the reason. Look, what is going on is premeditated rape of our, of our public purse. President Akufuado knew that Abdul Nasheed Isahaku, Johnson Esiama, and the late Milicina, who were governor and two deputy governors, who had security of tenure as governor and deputy governors, would not do what he wanted. So what did he do? He hounded them out and forced them to resign and brought in his mini-me. And I said, listen, put him there. Because he, he knew that Nash was able to look at the Mahama administration with only one oil field. The Bank of Ghana posted profits in 2016, oh, election year. They posted profits of 700 million Ghana cities. Now, you have the same Bank of Ghana with three oil well revenue, four times the revenue John Mahama was having, posting a loss of 60 billion. The over, same, over, the same over Bank of Ghana. 90% of that is on the wait, back of the DDEP. 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 Their debt their oh, would have been less than the, 10 the DDP, billion. Their DDP, was it caused, caused by four in Yasin Bay? Or, 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 or Bola Tinubu? It was caused by Akufuado and, Ken, and his minion, Ken Oforiata, his henchman, who is there wrecking the havoc. Look, let me tell you. Look, we need to do comparisons. People need to understand where we sit. The Bank of Ghana under John Mahama did zero financing in an election year and with one oil well made profit of 700 million Ghana cities and built a Bank of Ghana hospital. That Bank of Ghana hospital was where Akufuado's ministers, when they contracted COVID, after going to party in December, when they were in lockdown and there was COVID, and they went for that party Akufuado attended, that they all got COVID. Mm. It was the Bank of Ghana hospital that was built under John Mahama from the same Bank of Ghana. Bank of Ghana made so much profit, they built a hospital. Today, people go there for, for healing. Now, under Kufuado, four times the revenue, three oil wells, a $60 billion loss, and they are building a vain glory $250 million headquarters for themselves. That's the Bank of Ghana. All right. Let's, let's, so it's uh, not the system. It, it, it is the people in, who run the system. In some three to five minutes, we'll cap off the conversation. There are some things I'll take you back to your... <clears throat> constituency mm -hmm. uh, to look at. But two crucial issues I want you to look at briefly in about a minute. Niger and the happenings there, Bola Tinubu, the Senate jettisoning his Marshall Plan, Niger defiant. In fact, there was a rally on, on the deadline day with thousands of Nigerians thronging to celebrate. <clears throat> then there is this um, <clears throat> development, the African Bar Association. You, you are saying... <clears throat> Ekufuado has not lived up to expectation. But this is what president of the association, Hannibal Egbe Waifu, said recently when they conferred an honor on His Excellency the President. She said, <clears throat> in fact, he is a pan-Africanist, anti-corruption crusader, a rare, <laughs> please, please pay attention, a rare democratic leader in the field of good governance, a true African statesman whose legacies uh, present African leaders must emulate, and we are minded to say will stand the test of time. Put that side by side with what um, His Excellency, the Liberian President, George Opongwea, says, that if we want to do away with coups, then we should do away with the institutional coups, like we've seen in the likes of the Ivory Coast, Côte d'Ivoire, a third term, and justified by the Constitution. What do you make of these? these two? The okay. African bars was issued has just lost this credibility with what they've said. I mean, they, they, have, they have defined the antithesis, the opposite of Akufado. Akufado is not a respecter of democratic freedoms. 
is not diplomatic. He fights media men. Your media house, you, your media house, this media house I'm sitting on, you have come under West attack, the West attack in your history. And you are, you are, you are the first private media house. You have, you have survived Rawlings. You have survived Kufu. You have survived Mills. You have survived Mahama. You have not come under attack like you have under Kufuado. Your editorial policy has been challenged. Members of leading journalists of your, of, of your flock have had to run away. Some of them had to leave the country because Akufado could not stand them. So how do you tell me that such a person is a respecter of democratic freedoms? He is not just fighting joy and other media houses. He even summoned the diplomatic corps to Pedriasi and warned them to stop talking about the problems of Ghana. In fact, he warned the German ambassador to be quiet. And then the following weekend, he was asking the German finance minister to help him go and beg China to get an IMF program. That's how intelligent our president is. You know, but you see, this man who has damaged all our institutions of state, how do you confess such an award on him and say he's an anti-corruption crusader? Which part, which part of Akufado hates corruption? I mean, I'm sure when they read that citation, the devil shouted blood of Jesus because he couldn't believe. He set up the office of the special prosecutor. The one that called him the mother serpent of He corruption. said he would adopt the Anas principle in fighting corruption. And, 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 and he has are, you fought, say, are you saying you're not he, seeing anything he, from he the He has government? fought Anas, and under his watch, Anas' top uh, 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 investigator, Ahmed Swali, has, was murdered in cold blood, and up till now, the police have not been able to identify his killer. That's Akufado's record. So Akufado is all talk and no action. He's a soundbite president. He says the things that will give him, give him such citations, but he doesn't do anything. Look, there is no Ghanaian. There is no Ghanaian who believes in what is being said. On the point of Niger, I am a student of democracy. I believe that democracy must strive, but I believe that Africa must develop its own version of democracy. The Western democracy is not suitable for that. It's not working, eh? Absolutely not. It doesn't work for Africa. You look at Rwanda. Rwanda is celebrated by the West, but what they practice in Rwanda is not the Western democracy. You go to Botswana, it's not the Western democracy. They have adopted it for themselves. But you see... Let us call a spade a spade. The West is running riots, and I'm happy. My, my salute goes out to the Nigerian Senate for telling Bola Ahmed, Ahmed Tinubu that he should focus on dealing with Boko Haram. You can't deal with Boko Haram, and you're going to fight the president of another There's even the Biafran You can't deal with Biafra. You are, there's, there's rampant armed robbery on the streets of, of, of Nigeria. You can't travel after certain times, and, and you want to go and, go and do what? Because Western, Western puppet masters are asking you to go into an African state, what was France's interest in Niger? And you should begin to ask yourself what's happening in Francophone Africa. People are waking up. People are waking up and saying that, look, we can no longer be Ma taken Mali has students. dissociated itself. Absolutely. And now Niger and, seems and to for be following me, the trend. And for me, it is this awakening in the next generation of Africans that we are capable of managing our own affairs and that we must unite, we must have a new cadre. Look, and look, look across the, the landscape of Francophone Africa, with the exception of the Niger guy who is a bit elderly, I think he's about 61 or so. All the other guys, the Bukinabe, the Mali, the, the Guineans, they're young, young soldiers. You understand me? Africa needs a crop of young leaders who are Afrocentric in their thinking and who will say to the West and Europe, we would stay, hold our own, trade amongst ourselves, we will only trade with you if you are willing to come and negotiate with us as equals, this whole capitulation, this whole sense that we are inferior, that we are incapable of managing our affairs. Look, a black man, Kwame Nkrumah, showed that it is possible. Just over the weekend. But he said it. At just over the weekend. Just over the weekend. I, sh I took my kids across about three regions and showed them a few things Nkrumah did. And you know what my soon to be eight year old son said to me, said, Daddy, Nkrumah did a lot for Ghana. And he wasn't present for a very long time. And I said, yes, he set a bar that nobody can meet. Nobody, none of our following presidents has been able to meet. You understand me? So it is possible if you have the leadership, the desire to serve your people and not to serve yourself. And look, that is where we are going. This whole talk, Akufado is talking about Niger, uh, they should, they should, they should, they should, they should, they, they, the hunter must, must withdraw and allow institu uh, democratic institutions. What did he say when his friend, Alassane Ouattara, Alassane Ouattara changed the constitution of, of, or attempted to change the constitution of Ivory Coast? What did he say when his friend in Senegal tried to do it?
It is that hypocrisy of African leadership that is leading to a, a revolution in the younger generation of Africans to say, these old folks have had their day, they've had their say, it's our time to take our destiny into our own hands. Okay, but you do admit, like you said, that the way of coups is not the no, way No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in no way supporting coups, but I'm saying that if our democra so-called democratic institutions do not foster democracy, you then open the windows for people to vent their spleen in a certain manner. For military expeditions. Absolutely. We, we, we have to go. Just quickly, um, I hear there's an invasion of black flies in Ningo Pram Pram, yeah. your constituency. Tell us a we, bit about that. And we, then finally, as an elder, is it deacon or elder? Elder. Elder. Uh, you know, Perez Chapel. Mm. Your, your lead pastor, mm. uh, the archbishop, mm. did I get it right? Is yes, it archbishop. archbishop. Charles Sargina, sorry. Has now almost, in a way, taunting the other side. You remember the Nogupo incident we spoke of? I've heard him in recent times again saying, it's been how many days and nothing has happened to him. I, oh, I don't know one, whether that's... That's, one, on that, you, you that's, remember, that's you, the right... After oh, no, all the furore and the oh. thing dying down, I don't know whether he, he well, really well, should well, be doing well, that. Well, well, you think it's died down. You know they wrote to the church, giving the church another ultimatum. They did. Yes, they gave the a archbishop. They gave the archbishop a second seven-day ultimatum, and now said they were going to go to court. And we said, okay, fine. If Nogupo can fight the archbishop and he needs to go to court, that's fine. They can go to court. So you see, but let me tell you something. Nobody should say that the archbishop is taunting them. If you read the Bible, when when there was a showdown between the prophet Elijah of and, and Elijah, the of what did he say to them? He said they should cut themselves and they should shout louder because maybe their God has travelled. Was he taunting them? Actually, he was. Okay. But then eventually, when, when he called upon the God of heaven, he said, let fire come from above. What happened? Fire came from above. There is one God. We were told that we will see who rules the cosmic. We have seen who rules the cosmic. Are we in, in, in a dispensation where there's a fine marriage between traditional African religion? And nobody has a problem. Christianity, Islam, we and all of that. respect all of that fine balance. But we are saying that somebody threw a challenge to our God, the God of heaven that we serve, Yahweh. Someone said that one of his generals, one of his oracles, Ajinasari, if he did not come and submit to them, was given a 14-day ultimatum and he would see who rules the cosmic. Today is, I think, day 64, 65. And we are seeing that Ajinasari is there. I mean, this is not, this is not taunting. Someone drew a challenge. The challenge has been met. Your challenge, you've not been able to... 60 days and I'm still dancing. You've not been able to carry out your challenge. So this one, okay. it is for you to go back and reconsider. Okay. Because you see, okay. Ajinasari didn't wake up and throw a challenge to anybody. Okay. The challenge was thrown from a certain quarters. He accepted the challenge. How, how, do, how do we resolve this finally? And, and let's which, do the which, black which one? I mean, this, this issue. How do we... How oh, do we, 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 for us, we are worshipping and thanking. I, I don't see how you can solve religion. You know, there's a reason... We are, we are there's thanking, a reason God, you, we are you thanking don't take the God of Spiritual heaven. matters to court. Yes. I, I, exactly. There's a reason that, that, you don't take spiritual matters. That's why I was surprised. They said we're going to take us to court. But, but that's why we are, we are thanking God. And you see, remember, when, when the, the ten lepers met the, the Lord and he told them to go and take the bath, when one came back, he said, you've been made whole. So it, it pre-emphasizes the purpose and essence of thanksgiving. Okay. So if, we, if, if, if our God has fought and protected our archbishop and the church, we're only giving thanks to him. All you right. know, but, you know, Nkwanta do, uh, uh, do uh, Nkwanta Fodu, right? Nkwanta Fodu. Nkwanta Fodu. Yeah. You know, that's how our, gen, our national chairman has described the 10 contestants in the MPP. Oh, right? Sam George. But okay, fine. 10, ten fine. lepers. And fine. the one that, the one that goes back to Tanka Kufu, he will, he, will, he, will, he will anoint him flat. Black flies. Black flies. 30 seconds. Let's go. The black, black flies. flies. We are still waiting for How them. are you dealing yeah. with it? Well, well we, we've worked with the Neglected Tropical Diseases Unit of the Ghana Health Service. Okay. Um, they came. We identified some of the breeding sites. We're trying our best to mitigate it. But these things, they thrive in fast-flowing water. And that well, particular water body we found, and they actually it comes bite. all the way from, from the Afran Plains. Yes, it bites. And so we've, we've, we've procured some, my office has procured a few repellents we, that are FDA approved against okay. them. We gave them to the assembly men. We've distributed those. We want to see the efficacy. If, it, if the reports we get show that it's working, we'll try and do a lot more. But for now, all we can do is to continue to urge people to cover up as much as possible. Because I have seen some of the sores, and they're, 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 you know, when it bites you, it leaves like a little yeah. pass and then it becomes a sore. You know, but yeah, but uh, we wish Quatafordu, Quatafordu, 10 lepers. 
Uh, let's see who Sam George is member of parliament for Ningo. Uh, pam, pam, Sam George. Anyway, we all call him Jata. Uh, it's been quite but, a but conversation. Remind Greta that I'm still waiting for my suit. Or the summons that privileges. I, I, I think they heard you when, mm. when, when you threw that yeah. out uh, there. Sam George is member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. We still have a lot coming your way on the AM show. We'll be engaging the MEST in terms of their partnership with the MasterCard uh, Foundation, among other conversations that we're going uh, to be having here. We're going to take a bit of a breather, but before we go, let me just, I mean, so many of your messages, I'm sorry I cannot uh, take them now, reflections on the conversation we've had, but I have to do this. Uh, Rasaltana Patet, uh, someone would, what, what an interesting nickname. Jigbadi, today is your uh, birthday. I'm doing this midway uh, through because you're a very special person. And I just want to salute you all the way in the UK. God richly bless you. We'll be right back with more on the AM Show. Do stay.